Just get ready to take it up. We can do it real fast. I can do it for you. Are you going to come back? We're live, we're live, but just, yep. All right. Are you shooting me now? Yes, I'm shooting you now. All right. Hey, aloha mai kako. Welcome to Hey Hue Vaiola, episode two. Got a very exciting afternoon plan for you all. We're going to wait for a few more to join us before we begin. Um, if you have joined us so far, we got about 75 people. Please go ahead and start a watch party on Facebook or share it with friends. Let's get as many of our ohana, especially our kane, to participate uh, this afternoon. My name is Kale Chang. It's my pleasure to be your host. We're just uh, spending a mellow afternoon sharing some aloha and some culture before all the crazy Friday kind of kapila starts at like four and five o'clock. So thank you for joining us. And if you have joined us, uh, please say aloha in our Zoom chat or Facebook comments. And throughout the hour, if you have any questions, feel free to ask your questions during the hour. All right. Okay, it is two o'clock. Aloha mai kako. Welcome to He Hue Vai Ola. My name is Kale Chang. It's my pleasure to be your host. Um, very quickly, let me explain what He Hue Vai Ola is. It's a webinar series brought to you by Ahakane and Kanayokana, two organizations who are both doing absolutely wonderful things for our Hawaiian community. This series is an opportunity for us to strengthen our ohana, our families at home, and what better way to do that? How do we, how do we ho'omana, ho'ikaika? Best way to do that is, well, let's focus on our men. Let's fill our households with mana and aloha by uplifting and empowering our kane, our Hawaiian men. The term hue vaiola, literally means a gourd of living water, symbolically referring to a man as a vessel of life guided by the god Kane. In Hawaiian culture, gourds also represent knowledge, 
In this series, we'll be showcasing, introducing to you some amazing gentlemen. Some may be cultural practitioners, experts in their field, some scholars, some leaders in our community, and some may be all of the above. They'll share their perspectives, traditional and contemporary practices, and advocacy in our Lahui. Again, welcome to episode two of Hehui uh, Vaiola. Thank you for allowing us into your homes. First question we have for you, well, we want to make this interactive as possible, right? So my here, my oi, where are you tuning in from? Leave a comment uh, on Facebook or in our Zoom chat box and let us know. This is uh, an interactive experience, so we want everyone to participate. Let us know where you're from. The further away, the better. <laughs> Last week, we had people from all over the world tune in. So again, please continue to share this so more people can join us. Also, we want to know uh, who, who are you? Ovai oi. Yeah, if you're a Kane, um, we're going to also do this in the chat box. If you're a Kane, please type one. Um, if you are a Vahine, you're going to type two. Uh, three, if Mahu, four, if your entire Ohana is joining us, and that'd be the best if your entire Ohana is, is with us this afternoon. So go ahead and take a second to do that as well. We also have a challenge for our Kane this entire week, uh, uh, entire month of May, since there's 31 days in May. Every day we are challenging you, all our men out there, to do 31 push ups. And this is to help raise awareness for domestic abuse. The rules are simple. Every day for 31 days in May, you'll record yourself doing 31 push-ups. And on the 31st, you're going to nominate another gentleman in your ohana or, or just another gentleman you know to join us in this challenge. Um, again, this is for awareness for domestic abuse. And you can use any of the hashtags you see on the screen. Of course, include the name of our show, Hey Hue Viola, or Hey Hue Viola Challenge 31, and so forth. All right, so that's the challenge for today. And you got to video yourself, okay, and post it on social media so we can help spread the word to um, keep sharing aloha through whatever platform we can, yes? All right. Okay, we have, uh, gosh. Maybe about 80 people. Great. Wonderful. Okay, before we begin, we'd like to create a healthy and pono space for us to share our time together. Whether you're watching from um, right here in Honolulu or across the globe, let's all take a moment to calm down a little bit, forget about our crazy day, and let's take some nice deep breaths. Let's get grounded and focused so we can truly enjoy our time together. At this time, while you continue to do that, we invite Kamana Opono Crab to offer our Oli for today. Hey, Ola, E ala e na kama kane o ta pai moku e. E ala e. E ala e na kama kolo kolo hai o tala hui e. E ala e. E ala e na kama i a i a kama ilu ilu kama kala i e. E ala e. E ala e na kama mai au o tpa i i e o liki kolo manu e. E ala e, e ala e, au lula, hou lue, hou lula, kama na e. Au luta i e ve a la la a o la a ha ai i tamano na moku o na kai ko e. E yo e lono nui a kea, e yo e na kapi i koa o li loa, au lui ta bautua kui hawaiki. E yo e ihi kapala umaema, 
Iyo e na kama o kamalala walu. Aulu i tamautua kui maui. Iyo e kanaloa. Iyo e na puko o tamawana. Aulu i tamautua kui kaho o lawi. Iyo e kalai pahua. Iyo e na alai nui ahina. Aulu i tamautua kui moloka. Eyo e lana i o ka ulala au. Eyo e kalau au a o te atu o pahulu. Aulu i tamotu a kui lana i. Eyo e lalo mai ea. Eyo e na uhi o ka kui hema. Aulu i tamotu a kui o ahu. Eyo e kamabailu alani. Iyo e na me e o kau moali i. Aulu i tamotua kui kaua i. Iyo e kaunu e na moa kakala o kalala kea. Aulu i tamotua kui i hau. Iyo e hawa i ka mole o ka honua. Iyo e hawa i ka piko o kanaka. Eyo e Hawaii i ka bai moku ora. Eyo e Hawaii i nui a kea Hawaii i kua uli. Hawaii i o kalani o wā kea. E ku ka abe no e... Eyo la no. Mahalo nui ka mana opono. Aloha mai kako. Again, my name is Kale Chang. It's my pleasure to be your host. On behalf of Ahakane and Kanayo Kana, welcome to episode two of He Hue Vaiola. Today we celebrate and take a closer look into Havele. Uh, by definition, it means to tie, to bind, to lash, or make fast. It also means a net lashing, which coincidentally you would use on a huevai or a gourd. Today we explore using uh, lashing techniques for everyday living, and let's meet our guests. First, Dr. Peter Kalavai Amor holds a PhD in political science from UH yeah, Manoa. He's an assistant professor and director of Hawaiian studies at uh, Windward Community College. There he teaches Hawaiian mythology, history, and traditional Hawaiian house building. He runs a Hawaiian cultural garden there as well and coordinates an annual class on traditional ahupua'a systems. Besides all of that, he graduated also as a student of herbal healing under Henry Papa'awai and is currently an alaka'i in traditional Hawaiian house and dry stack rock building. I'm so happy he could join us today. Let's welcome Kalawai Amor. Aloha palala. Our second and featured guest today, ladies and gentlemen, was born in Hana, Maui. After a successful career in both the US Navy and Air Force, after years of traveling the world, he, he heard a kahea from his paiaina to finally return home. In 1994, as part of a kupuna program with our DOE schools, he's built the first, uh, he built his first Hawaiian hale at Helemano School in Wahiawa. Since then, he's built over 200 Hawaiian hale. Kumupalani Francis Senensi is known as a kuhi kuhi puone, a Hawaiian architect. In his hometown of Hana, he directed the restoration of Pi'ilani Hale Heiau, the largest religious structure in all the Pacific. More recently, he led a team of builders in the restoration of Pu'ukohola Heiau in Koei Hai. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Kumu Palani Sinensi. Pa! E ya mako na po e kui kui, po le ku ona amara kea. Ka sa mana mana. E ya, e, hu, ha, e, hu, ha, e, hu. Kui a hawele na kanu na po e ya he hu ha he hu e ya he hu e ya he hu kui hawele na au he 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 kui homol kahale ra he ha he ha he hu sa wai kai noa o hobiko ko ino wai kai noa. Kui, 
uh, ladies and gentlemen. Dolomite. But uh, that's how we build a holly. Believe it or not, that was the order of, of erection on a holly. But before you can build a holly, you gotta gather all your your laau together. You gotta get all your ahu together. You gotta get your pohaku together. So what I said in the ha'a, build a foundation, kanu the pole, a valley, the laau, and uh, put the thatching on. Ho'omaluka hale, make the thatching comfortable. Funny. So, the, the, the lashing, back in the old days, they used uh, various natural fibers, uh, senate, among one of the things, how, among one of the things that they used to, uh, to uh, make aho. So today, after, we're gonna use the modern aho. See the nice modern aho? It's called nai olona, without olona. So what we do first, Kalavaya, can you see, are you doing this, Kalavaya? Yes, he is. Okay, so we make it into shakas or bundles pre-cut, pre-measured bundles. And we, we, we put them together like this. So we, when I say I need a number three shaka, show them how, what a number three looks like. And you measure how to say, oh, by the way, that's uh, Kawika, Burns, um, Haumana at Hana School. And uh, when I say throw me a number three, show, how, how do you number three? Anana. One, two, three, and then they'll throw the shaka up to me. Sometimes they like to get really, uh, what you call, cocky, and they go like this to me. I go, no, not that one. Throw this one. <laughs> so, then they throw a shaka to me. Okay, so now I'm gonna do it slow. So those who are watching, if you you can you can bundle or shaka your aho the way you want to. You can even. You can even uh, do it the old fashioned way of just coiling it like this. Just coil it up like this. And uh, in fact, I think that's probably how they did it back in the old days. Is just coil it like this. And, uh, and then just use it, take off what you need. But one day my tutu lady, one day I came back from the store, Hana store to be specific. And she told me, hey, Make the string like this. So I goes, what's that? She goes, just make them like this. And she did it so fast. I was, oh, I had to watch her a couple of times. But then I said, ah, oh, it's easy. So I did it. And it left me for several years. I, I forgot how to do this. And then one day while I was building my uh, fifth holly down at the Honda Culture Center, fourth or fifth, and I was using pull sticks and uh, Lo and behold, the pool stick fell down and it, all the aho became uh, unraveled or fell off the stick. So I goes, oh my gosh, I, I didn't want to climb down to get the stick. So I goes, I'll just, I'll just bring all the strings up like this. And uh, while I was doing this, and then I was about ready to step off the olokea and go down and grab the stick. I goes, what do I need the stick for when this thing is already bundled nicely? So from that moment on, about 24 years ago, we've been doing every holly, making these shakas. And without this shaka, I, have, I would have never built all the hollies I built because people have been winding this at night on the stick and then using it. So singularly, I, I credit the shaka for building as many hollies as I did. So now we're gonna demonstrate how we're gonna we're gonna do an upa? Okay, grab the stick. Put your aho down. Hey, Uncle, okay. can I ask a question real quick? Sure, go ahead. Uh, what was the traditional material you would use for cording? Uh, so olona, yeah. You know, olona was was really the strongest fiber, and they reserved that for uh, awamos and making uh, fish nets and uh, the stuff with with strength was involved and um wow nice so 
So they probably use a lot of how maybe and uh, Senate because in all my research, all I heard was Senate, Senate, Senate. So mm-hmm. um, I, I presume that Senate was used. They use uh, uki uki grass also for some braided uki uki grass, but they only use that for the smaller uh, smaller sticks, uh, the uh, the aho peel because it didn't mm-hmm. need the strength. It just need to keep everything in order coming down. So that one right. we use to do that. We use a, a different aho. It looks like a raffia, and we call that one for the lack of a name the upa, which is not not the upa, the holopa, because it's a traveling um, clove hitch that goes down with that with that cord. But today we're gonna we're gonna put this one in the back. So today, if you can go on this side, oh, we're gonna we're gonna do the upa. I'm gonna do it fairly fast, so you can you can see that how it's done, and then I'm gonna go slow. So usually, we use the cord, the size of cord that is commensurate to the purpose of the lashing, and the size of the lao. In other words. This this cord is actually overkill for this side, uh, <laughs> for this size um, laau. Can you hear that, uh, Kali? Um, yes, yes. Okay, so I'm doing fairly fast. I mean, not real fast, but and I'll explain the routing and procedures. Is anybody on online uh, following this? So Hawaiian lashings were basically three 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 lashings per per um what you call per juncture so uh, i don't know how many times they were wrapped but i presume that they had to not apply so much strength because i could break senate with my bare hands so with Mm -hmm. this this is 550 pound test i can pull i can pull a house down with this cord one one cord so you, but you tension it. So I, I use with nylon, I've worked with nylon uh, all my military life being in uh, survival equipment and all that. So I know all the properties of nylon. It is, uh, it's a really resilient cord and it keeps things tight. It mm-hmm. has, um, it has a slight uh, resistance to, to UV rays. I think they have more now. Uh, that uh, are are resistant to UV rays. So after we put one binding, we put this uh, this uh, stopper knot, which I call the Watanabe. Uh, for a better word, and it has that ki sound. You go Watanabe. <laughs> so all my guys are all. Yeah. All my guys are uh, what you call karate experts. Now. So now I'm going to do it slower, and we're going to do it on another piece. Um, yeah, put this against there. So, and then after this, I'm going to show the deviations that you can go from a. Remember, always one. Okay. So you start in Upa, which is the basis of uh, of all Hawaiian um, lashings. You anchor. Okay, uh, back in the old days, if you are using natural fiber, you would go and to save a lot of a uh, lot of uh, what you call material because it's hard to make fibers. You would put, only put one of these knots, and you go you put them like this. And the fiber would would, would 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 it would stay there. But look, well, oh, you see it slip. Oh, the tangle. Now, if this, who's got a knife? Good point. Um, what I was gonna say. Take that off. Slide this. So, and it has happened to me when I when I when I tied this the old. Not the old-fashioned way, but the traditional way. It it 
I almost uh, fell off the uh, the olokea. That's when I was building holidays. So that's the way that you're supposed to do it. But you see that? With nylon, you cannot and should not and better not use that, that uh, traditional. If you use um, uh, uh, Senate or Olona, you can do that and you will not slip out. But because mm. nylon is coated with a substance called Merlon, it will slip out. So what we do is we put two half edges and then here's the routing of the upa. I'm gonna cut some of these. It's too long. Speed it, you're nice. You're nice. We always um, Hawaiian lashings. I guess it's traditional. You always, or just like military, you always start off on your right foot, and your right foot is the left foot. So the right foot to start off in military march is the left foot and that's the right foot start off <laughs> not the right well, why do we get that okay so now we yes put got it <laughs> the, uh, uh, the knot on the top left hand side and so it's if the knot is up here you 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 go around the aho i mean the laau on the top side so it's just a matter of making u turns around around the laau when you get to it so that's why I named it the Upa. I think, uh, I, I don't know what the, uh, the English name is for this. So each one should go inside of the previous one, the previous wrap. And when you go to the other one, to go into the previous one, you have to cross in here. And that's the only place you should cross. And that crossing, which I discovered later, should be there because in here, when you really the the twist the rope together like that, it becomes a one rope. Everybody understand that? One rope, one aho, and then you um, finish off. So that's three, that's three lashings. So now, when I do my throttling, what? Now that's, that's one, two, three, Okay, then I put my lock, F in, F. <coughs> and then I put the, the, the second locking half edge around. And then I put a counter, a counter uh, a throttle, meaning I go the opposite way. If you notice, I put four, oh, cut it just a bit too short. I put four, um, four throttles, eh? Four throttles one way with, with extreme tension on it, which causes torque. So now to keep it from wanting to unwind, I put that counter talk, torque on it. And that's one of the, one of the innovations that we, we did for, uh, for lashings. So, and then I put a stopper knot here if I had a long enough one. So we're gonna go over there and uh, demonstrate, you guys gonna tie one. And um, you can help me, uh, I'm, I'm gonna demonstrate the next one. Um, so you can go from here to there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so go over there. We'll ask the okay, ones Okay, we'd like to one. welcome uh, Malia Nobriga Oliveira. Hello, Tita, long time no see. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we got people from Maui, from Kauai, TC Thompson, aloha mai. Umi Kai from Kaimuki, aloha kumu. Who's that, uh, Umi Kai? We got, yeah, we have people from Pupukea, Landa from, uh, oh, from Hana. <laughs> so people from all over watching. On left side, start on left side ground. So, anyway, uh, while they're doing that, I, I, can, I can make, I can do, uh, a variation of the upa, which called, I'm going to do the UX. 
No, the ek, ek or ekes. So, uh, come. And it's just a variation. And it's, it's a faster one to make and uh, it's fairly easy and you can apply it any place where, where you have two pieces together. Sometimes you have to tie angular, so you have to think you're, that this wood is straight like this when you make your lashes. Okay, Nanya. Mm -hmm. Go, Nanya. Uncle, Uncle, I have shot. Okay, we're gonna make them. Oh, I don't know if you can see that. Sorry. Right. Oh, sure. There's another orange one on the. I got there. This is. Mine. Okay, so now I'm gonna make. So I'm gonna make the uh, the X or the X. X. Dos X. This cool. I give a quick X? question. This is the X. This okay, go X. ahead. I got a question from actually from Umi. He asks, um, when you you're doing these these lashings, are you doing it from outside the hale or from inside the hale? Generally, all most of the lashings are made from the inside of the hale, because when you're building, oh. you're and an all you're an on an olokia like that yes like that and that olokia is a scaffolding system and every every um rung is tied with an upa -a or a, a variation of upa -a's, uh excess so uh so now i'm gonna do a a, a variation but it no matter what the um the basis of of almost all the lashings is oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> dangerous <enemy. laughs> oops okay so <laughs> gonna be two half inches if you can do that I, I know everybody some some guys have four thumbs some guys have three so I only have two so I use my two thumbs and in concert so I'm gonna do this slow again how to to do you can go, you can do it any way you want to, but if you do it this way, it stays correct, meaning it'll slide. So you see? So you should have some left over here so it doesn't pull. Through. Okay, so now we're going for an X. So an X, you start your X going down and you have the OO in the back. So this is really easy to do. Anybody can do this. Even Kalavaya can do it. <laughs> Oh, He's there. so <laughs> so you want to make it you want to make it kind of nice so you can put the next make all the X's go down or we say all my X's go to Texas so you make it go down like this and then on the back you can go look on the back too on the back it look just like an upa -a. okay so oh I'm sorry the wrong turns. Um, is Kili Rochelle online? <laughs> is Kili on? You see, I don't know. I don't know if he's on. Okay, because I was going to use his name in vain. Because one time <laughs> when we uh, were showing him how to do the upa, and then he went, actually, he taught me how to do the UX because he did the U. He did what I call a Kili Rochelle. So if you uh, make a slight deviation from the from what you were taught, from what I taught you, we name mm -hmm. that lashing after you. Uh, for instance, like Terry Blake will put a knot in a in a shaka. We name the. If you make a mistake, we call you Terry Blake. You know, you become famous in a not so nice. <laughs> way. So you see, you see how it goes. And then, of course, I do all my throttling tight, and then I do the locks. The locks is going into the loop. Pulling it on this side, look. So on this side right here. On this side right here. Can you see? So you see the lock. Boom, boom. You pull it real tight, all your might. And then you pull this one down. Tight. And then you put the reverse. And then you put this. I want to do it slow. I call this Bruce Lee knot. So you go, what are? I'm sitting behind the other knot. <laughs> 
So the more knots you put behind the other knot, Umi, you're watching Umi. The more you put behind the other one, like if you pull like that, you see the slack, put one more behind it. So the more you, you put back there, it's like tightening the knot. I mean, uh, the not knot, the K-N-O-T, no, the N-U-T. Um, okay, so you see you see that? That's a that's an X, but with a U in the back. Okay, oh, nice. gonna do, we're gonna check on these guys right here, and then I'm gonna set up and get, get ready for the, doing the uh, the uh, All right. How are you doing, Kalavaya? I'm good. I'm just basically trying to mirror what uh, Kumu is saying. So mm -hmm. I know some of you guys at home, while he's uh, doing checking on those guys, you start all of these lashings on the top. Take the two cords. I usually put them parallel together. What you're creating is a double slip knot. And then take one of these, the one short end uh, string, go around both the strings and loop it like this. Around and loop it again, that's two. That's a double slip knot. It slips, it slides right in. We I mean, bury it right in there. And then like Kumo was saying, you, you're following a U pattern. That's why we call it an UPA. So it's one U here, one U around this lao. Can you guys see it? Can you see it at all, Kali? Yes, yeah, that's a good view. One U around this piece, and then one U, as you go back and you start to see the other cordage, you're going inside the previous line of cordage so that the cordage is biting on it on the other piece of cordage, like this piece right here. I'm going to follow mm -hmm. inside. 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 That, that's what helps on the other side. make the whole lashing strong. So usually, when we said traditionally, you do three or four passes of, of the cordage through the whole ooh pattern. So now, uh, so to follow up on Umi Kai's question, the, when you guys build the olokea or the scaffolding, okay, does yeah. that happen? Does the scaffolding happen outside the hale or inside the hale? It happens inside, and and inside. usually, uh, 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 you know, you know, when I I was uh, building, usually we are onlookers like a different profession other than uh, a profession other than engineer or uh, or architect or a builder they always look at that olokia and they immediately go wow that's a scaffolding system and all the guys that build houses it goes how are you going to get the roof up so right see the mindset right there how are you going to get the roof up and i goes <laughs> no it's just a scaffolding he goes all that just for build holly i go yeah so <laughs> so here we go we start off okay. the UX by making a normal U. And then we go, the next pass we go into, I invented this thing. So one day I was doing uh, UX for um, some Japanese visitors. Uh, in fact, a Japanese architect from the University of Tokyo. And he says, oh, he, he speaks to me in Japanese. He goes, da, 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 da. I goes, oh, really? He goes, <laughs> telling me that that is a Japanese lesson. Oh, I goes, oh my God, I thought I invented it. So, you know, all school, all knowledge is not in one school. Right, Umi? <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so, right. Okay. So, you know, why you cross over in here? It, because it keeps the lashings all centralized within the within the juncture right here it's not outside outside of the juncture too much of the of the opposite piece of wood yeah because if you have it way out here and you tighten it up here and i come by and i squeeze this i guarantee you that lashing is useless already because it takes us put slack into it so you you want to keep everything centered center of the cross right here um and, uh, Kumo, I'm sorry I'm to interrupt. I just want to. Can we can we just yeah. recap? So we did the upa first. We did the ux, and this is a third style. Yeah, and this is no, no. Okay. We did the x. The second one was the x. 
and this yeah. is the UX. So oh, this is the UX, and, okay. But uh, like I said, but Japanese style. I mean, it's natural. <laughs> you can do an X, you can do UFA, you can go, you can do a UX. You know, it's it's a it's a next step up. And um, we, oh, okay. we do. There's about seven seven different lashings, but basically, um, you should learn. Everybody should learn how to do the um, the U. Uh, upa uh, at least, and you can deviate from there. You can go into mm -hmm. a Kili Rochelle uh, from there. But that's when Kili was doing the Upa, and I left the scene. I came back, and he was had one going like this. I was, I looked at the lashes, and I said, "Who made that lashes?" Because, oh, Kili did. I was, oh, okay, we will leave him there. So he stayed up there for twenty <laughs> years until they just restored <laughs> the holly down at Hamo. Kili, you you're more famous than you think. Yeah. Um, what anyway, type of wood is usually I used a, in I the construction the of, of Halle? Pardon? What type, uh, what type of, of wood? Of wood? Oh, right now, the woods that we use, I'm going to use uh, an acronym, E-K SOMI, I-K-E-S-O-M-I. And that stands for ironwood, keave, eucalyptus, strawberry guava, ohia, mangrove, and uh, inkberries. And inkberries... And they, they they have different names. Uh, uh, which you call they have their uh, Latin names or whatever you call them. But um, I know for sure that uh, Ohia is Metrosideris polymorpha, and Ironwood is Castorana ecrocidifolia. And uh, and <clears throat> Professor Moore can fill you in on the rest if he still remembers. <laughs> uh, you so, collected. Robusta. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Paul, like what, so what's mango? Uh, uh, mango rhizophora. Rhizophora mango. Well, oh, you got one wrong, golly. I got to feel. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, are there any questions? I mean, let's go back to. So, we're going to end. We got how many minutes we got? Six. Six minutes. Six or oh, so. Wow. Yeah. So, Samanao about the aho. So the word aho, usually aho is is a quarter inch or less in the in the diameter, and anything about above that would be considered kaula. Yeah, kaula. Oh, okay. Three eighths and above would be kaula. Yeah. So aho is smaller and used usually for making nets and for stuff like that. Aho. So I don't, they didn't mention the word kaula in all the research I did. And anyway, in case you, you uh, some, I know some of you are, are curious. Well, how did uh, Lolo from Hana learn how to build Kale? It started in a sixth grade, Mrs. Nauni. Sixth grade, she sent us to the library and said, hey, you guys go we'll write about something Hawaiian, draw pictures, come back, show and tell. So everybody took Lama Lama torch, fishy, throw net, all those Hawaiian things. And it was a mm -hmm. book by Helen Gay Pratt from the Bishop Museum. She was a chair at the Bishop Museum. And uh, she, I just opened the book and I saw the, 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 post, the post cuts and the, the rafter. Oh, uh, and I said, wow, I want to I I do this. So I drew it up and read about it and wrote, wrote about it in the sixth grade. And I went all the way around the world and came back in 1991. And my kupuna, uh, my alakai, or oh, I forget what they call it. Um, yeah, she goes, Uncle Pulai, go build us one holly. And I goes, what? She goes, go build us one holly. I go, what at? She goes, a attached house. I goes, oh, you mean a grass shack? Oh my God. When I grew up <laughs> until that very moment, all we knew about Holly was the word grass shack. And I swear, I was really educated at that moment. She goes, Holly Peely, you little lost. You almost slapped my head. So, Holly Peely. And um, actually, my first Holly was not made out of Peely. It was out of a uh, Lolo uh, of the Chinese Paquet variety. And um, I built it at uh, Hilamano School in Oahu. Um, we built the largest Holly in the world. We have it down here. Uh, it's 100 and 
hundred feet long by thirty foot wide. Wow! And uh, it's held with miles of parachute cords, miles. And if you all go to um, uh, Disney Aulani Hotel, you can see some of the work that some of my uh, Haumana did. And we even oh wow, uh, yeah. So all the lashings you see in the Ama Ama Bar and the uh, the restaurant uh, is all traditional Senate. Uh, all we, right. we put in Anakala. three, we put in about three and a half miles, three and a half miles of cord. Wow. Um, I understand so, you had a couple of experiences um, proving just how strong and resilient these Hale are. Can you share one of those oh, experiences? Uh, if you look at my Facebook cover, uh, the cover photo, it shows all these people mm -hmm. on an Olokea, the scaffolding system like this. So, yeah. when I was asked to go restore this heiau over at Pukola, uh, they said, yeah, the engineers said, you got to use pipe, you got to use this, we're going to use the, uh, you know, all this equipment. I goes, no, no, no. Our ancestors built this by hand. We're going to do it by hand pass one rock at a time. How are you going to get all this stuff up? We're going to build an Olokea and we're going to pass one rock at a time, which we did at Pi'ilani Heiau. So that was, that was the, we set the precedent at Pi'ilani and we went to Pukohola. They said, you got to build one and we got to test it in the University of Hawaii uh, laboratory, the uh, construction laboratory. And they applied tests to it, uh, hydraulic pressure to each one of those junctures and they said, if it, it takes, if it takes less than 300 pounds to move one, it's gonna fail. And then if it doesn't come back to its original position, it's gonna fail. So the weakest lashing we had was 412 pounds. And the strongest we had to move it was 1100 and some pounds. So right there, wow. or actually they said, it's gotta be able to hold, all okay, it's gotta be able to hold one someone I don't know how much someone weighs, but once someone went and 100 pound rock, I got ah, nothing. So, and wow. we, we restored the hail, so it's still up. And look, is there anything our, else? Our, is there uh, anything else you wanted to demonstrate? Yeah, climbing, uh, climbing up. Oh, yeah. Okay, while these guys are climbing up, go. While you guys climbing up here, this, this, you're doing the finishing now. Okay, guys. I'm slow, no jump up and down. <laughs> While they're, uh, and then after this, we'll make some time for more questions. Okay, so we normally, I don't use bamboo, but uh, I had uh, prior to this uh, coronavirus lock lockup, uh, mm -hmm. the bamboo uh, people in town donated. They said, we'll donate some bamboo. And so we use bamboo. Hey, this is like saved us about Three thousand dollars worth just to gather the material. So, and you guys, uh, the closing remark is: I say that the aho is like the word aloha. It binds people together. So we can say that the aho is the association of Hale owners. Aho is like aloha. In fact, we can call it aha aloha. Aloha. Okay, guys, go climb up all the way. <laughs> and then, you know what? Ask these guys questions. Well, let me ask Kalavai a question real quick. Okay. Um, Kalavai, uh, how did you get involved? I mean, gosh, you have, I could do a whole show on just you. But besides your other things that you're yeah, involved, how did you yeah. get involved with this, with this cultural practice? Uh, I, mahalo for the question. So I had, done a couple of Hale projects in the 90s, uh, one at Lapakahi, and I, uh, I helped set up some of the one, some of the work that was happening at Kaniwai over in Manoa. And a friend of mine knew I was interested in Hale building, and one day when I was heading into work, about 10 years ago, as a matter of fact, uh, this friend of mine called me up and said, hey, there's going to be a, a Hale building symposium at Lions Arboretum. Nice. Right. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go. He says, it's right now. So it's like nine in the morning. I drive over in the Lions Arboretum with my Aloha shirt and long pants. And I get out and I happen to be standing right next to Pumu Palani. 
and he's there with shorts and a tool belt and boots. And he looks at me and goes, <laughs> you don't look ready to build Holly. I go, I'm, I'm here for the symposium on Holly building. And he starts laughing. He goes, ah, ha, ha, ha. he goes, okay, Hoppa kid, follow me. <laughs> uh, I've been following him ever since. He had me holding wood while, I was cha- while he was chainsawing in my Aloha shirt and stuff. He got a real kick out of it. Anyways, I've been following him ever since. Um, been a lot That's of awesome. Fun. Yeah. So you're here with me on Oahu. If other Kane are interested in learning this craft, how, how can they get involved? Well, Kumu has a halau, and um, you should hook up with, I, I think we have some information at the end of the show for his halau. Uh, so that's nice. one way. And we also teach a class at Windward Community College where you work with me directly. And then um, we also work directly with Kumu on Holly projects itself. It's a hands-on course where you learn how to build Holly. Uh, we do small projects and small Hollies on campus. We repair the Holly we have on campus. And then we jump in with projects with Kumu Palani on Oahu. Sometimes we'll go Maui or we'll go some of the other yeah. islands and jump in. So it's, uh, it's a real practical way to get into it. Uh, thank you. Uh, Kumu Palani. Hello. So you had, you've had a great life traveling the world, years of military service. Can you talk about the moment you realize I got to drop everything and come back home to Hawaii? Oh, man. I was watching Mary Monarch. I'm going to ooh it, but. It's okay. I was watching Mary Monarch and I cried. I said, I'm yeah. going home. And I did. I, I told my wife, I'm retiring tomorrow. So when I walked into the colonel's office, I goes, here, sign this. He looks at me, he says, Chief, you can't retire. It takes a, pre- it takes a presidential signature to retire a Chief Master Sergeant. So I, goes, I don't mm-hmm. care, put it in. So six weeks later, he calls me up. He goes, Chief, he signed the paper. And I already had a, a three-year assignment to go to Florida to a top circuit can stop. Um, mm-hmm. with, with the uh, Delta team guys. Uh, you know, I was going to work with the Blackbirds. And then I said, nah, I don't like Florida. There's too much hurricane on there. So I came home. And I've been stuck ever since oh thank you for Kalavaya. sharing that I story Kalavaya. i did no i met Kalavaya dressed up in an elevator in washington dc i go that was time number two huh? <laughs> I said, what are you doing here with your <laughs> so That's yeah funny. that was the, that was the second time we met the second time we met i was like oh i gotta hook back up with that holly builder guy and the, i run into him in an elevator in washington dc just him and me so I was like, okay, that was weird. definitely fade. <laughs> We're supposed to hang out. And then Kumu, can you speak to the, the, the men of Hawaii? Because um, like myself, there's plenty of men who think I'm 30 years old, I'm 40 years old. It's too late for me to, to dive into something new or a cultural pra- uh, practice that I haven't done yet. You know, um, what would you say to Kane who left, who, who, who think they're too old to start? I was 48 years old when I retired. And I was the oldest guy in the squadron. My, my mm-hmm. commander was younger than me. And he met our lieutenant colonel was younger than me. And uh, whenever I, 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 we used to qualify by running. And I had, my shirt was said, old man. So I was the oldest guy at 48. <laughs> and here I am, see, I, I was at 48, now I look back, I was like a babe in the woods. So to the guys that are only 30, 40, and 14 years old, <laughs> Um, you guys lucky, you guys got your whole life in front of you and learn, go back uh, build stone walls Chaluk over there, I got tarot going all over, if 7, 8 year old man can do all this kind of stuff uh, stack these rocks like this, you young uh, 30 year old guys you guys are babes in roots so I, I, I don't know what else to say I try to uh, lead by example, but yeah. uh, uh, and uh, I, I say you gotta, you you guys gotta do it this way. I, I implore upon my guys, please do it the same way that I do it. When you get your own halal, then you could do it. You dance the way you like to dance. So that's my 
So, I mean, not all knowledge is in one school, guarantee. So I'm not the best Holly builder in the world. I've, been, I've built the most, probably I've built more Hawaii, uh, Holly in this century than the last century. If you go back one century, I've built more Holly than any Hawaiian because by that time, Holly Pula, tin roofs came in. And uh, I think that first Holly that was, was saved, but it's been redone, it's the one in Bishop Museum. And that Holly is where I did my, I did my research. That one, and I did, mm -hmm. I read a lot. Because, uh, you know, I was exposed to it and I, I, was, I was hungry. I was, you know, planting taro was, anybody can plant taro. Uh, going on a canoe, uh, that was fun. But when I hit the holly thing, it was like, that was my, uh, that was my owl, oh, my binding. The lashings that you showed us that are specific to holly, are they similar to those that are used in other applications, like on a va'a or? Uh, some guys say, yeah, it is. But, but on the va'a, I think the only ones that uh, the Elio lashing probably and the X, uh, they have to throttle, but they throttle individual uh, when you they lash it in individual things. And it's, I mean, the Va has to be flexible and strong. The Holly, it, I, I know when, uh, um, uh, what this uh, Capena from the Big Island, um, was that Captain from Big Island? His name? He died. Here. But anyway, he made his hollies on the Big Island uh, using uh, canoe type lashings. And and the, and the, and I think he built the one at Kanivai, right at the UH. Oh. And it's fine. You know, if, if, you, if you make a lashing and it holds it up, it's fine. But um, in Hawaiian architecture, indigenous Hawaiian architecture. It's really similar to Tahiti because I was in Tahiti. I was doing a project in Tahiti and I met with their uh, architect and he goes, and he was drawing the holly because he, he designed the holly. Mm -hmm. And I go, yeah, we have that. And th our names and Tah Tahitian names are similar. The names of the, the you know, the, the, the members of the holly, Tahiti and, and us, it's similar. Um, Except for their, they they have uh, the the po mahoy and we have the po hana, so slight difference. Kalavaya, can I ask you a question real quick? Sure. Um, if I can ask you to speak to the men in our audience, because we have all ages, kupuna, makua, keiki. Um, it seems like, despite all your accolades, you're still a lifelong student of of many things. So, how would you encourage Hawaiian men to? to get involved in their culture, even if, you know, it might be something new to them? Uh, that's a great question. You know, um, I didn't start learning how to build Hale till after 40 years old. And mm -hmm. uh, I would just say, uh, find something in this, in this lifetime, find something, you know, we didn't, a lot of us, I didn't grow up with Hawaiian traditions in my family. We were right. supposed Me to too. be good Americans <clears throat> and, uh, when I first wanted to do Hawaiian things, uh, some of my family was not encouraging. And um, I don't, you know, that's not a, a knock on any of them. That was the times back in, for me, it was back in the 80s, back in the 90s still even. <clears throat> um, but just, I, I would encourage you to try to, um, it's hard to work through the shame. So right. it's good to have other, other brothers around and other encouraging wahine who know that and they're, they're involved, especially in holly building. Like, I love working with Kumu Palani because he's he's um, he's always still honest about trial and erroring and things like that. <laughs> so it makes us it makes all of us feel um, secure about being insecure about things. You know, we're all out there bringing Hawaiian things back into our own lives and into our families' lives. It's not too late. I also didn't pick back up Hawaiian language till I was in my 40s too. I mean, I wouldn't say I'm fluent, but I'm but I get by. And um, same with Hawaiian chanting and other things. It wasn't until I was way older. So there's mm -hmm. room for all of us Hawaiian men to find something that you like and then um, 
just slowly work away on it on your own with other other guys like us come with us or there's a lot of holly mua that are around today i mean there's it's never been a better time to be doing hawaiian things there's so many great traditions that have been revived that are easy to get back into um at the college we also have a hawaiian wood shop you know and i know andre perez also runs a group too are uh, there some great oh, yes. Yeah, some great Hawaiian woodworking. And then, of course, there's there's um, Kumu Umi as well. I'm glad you're tuning in. Of course. <laughs> I, those guys have been really encouraging to me uh, by taking the pressure out, off of it. And you find good guys <clears throat> who uh, understand because they all are just like us, just um, uh, finding ourselves through some of these activities and finding some pride in them and trial and erroring. Um, so my recommendation is go and trial and error. Go take a stab at it. Oh, that's awesome. And I think that's so important because for Kane, we're so, we jump at opportunities to kue or to go into martial arts or hula, you know, the more, more popular cultural practices, but there's so many opportunities to get involved and get back to our Aina, you know? Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. 30 seconds. Okay, go. Okay, 30 seconds. Yes. My help, introduce yourself real fast. Yes, aloha. Oh, uh, my name is Kuiko Helakai. Oh, my name is Kuiko Ball. Go, Nanea. My name is Nanea Morton. And that's Paulo Burns. Hi, Paulo Burns, aloha. Oh. And, and uh, mahalo, you guys. I uh, really appreciate uh, this time with you guys. At least I got to see Kalawaya during this. Uh, hey, hey, you know, get a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Uncle, we should it's say. So nice to see. So nice to see the generations with you right there. Three generations of Holly builders. Um, I just want to give a yeah. special mahalo to both of you. What a great opportunity for Connie to learn something that they might not have even heard of before. So I leave you with definitely, one. Uh, yes. One, one more. Yes, yes. I don't want to find out that somebody went tidy wahine up. <laughs> I'm going to come take your license away. <laughs> or Connie. Okay, so this well, I just want to, again, mahalo. Uh, Kumupalani and Kalavaya for joining us. What a great episode. Mahalo. And um, just mahalo nui for your time and for sharing your mana and your aloha with, with our beautiful people out there. Um, I'm going to be going through some, some things to close our episode, but thank you so much, both of you, for participating today. Um, I want to give some mahalos at this time to our sponsors that make uh, Hei Hui Vaiola possible. Kane o kana. Ahakane, Papaola Lokahi, and the uh, Consuelo Foundation. Uh, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Ahakane and or at uh, Kanayokana as well. And follow us on the hub of social media, Facebook pages. Um, we'll be looking out for your May challenges, all you Kane out there. So don't forget to do your 31 for 31 as part of your daily movement. We all got to stay healthy uh, no matter where we are. The hashtag again is uh, Hehuevai Ola Challenge, uh, Ole Domestic Abuse. Here's some resources that, um, you know, like Kalawai mentioned, very Western style to think uh, every man for himself, very Hawaiian pride to think you don't need nobody, but you know, where it's a kako thing for, for sure. And if you are in need of, of help, meaning just somebody to talk to, or you need to reach out to somebody, there's so many opportunities for you to do that um, on the screen now. And this will be uh, rebroadcasted or re, uh, put up online. So you can check out all of these opportunities um, for you to, to feel like you're part of something bigger. And it's not just you out there. For our kupuna, we have resources as well, our kupuna.com and a couple others. And for other resources, we have uh, Ohana Behavior Health. We have resources for our Hawaiian veterans. And even those of you who are going through certain things just because of what's happening right now. Um, so again, thank you for joining us for this episode two of Hehue Viola. Um, 
again, what a great opportunity to learn from our elders and to recognize that there's so many kumu out there and there's so much more to learn. So um, come back next week. We have another uh, wonderful episode. And we are bringing all the way from the hometown of Waimanalo, Kuike uh, Ohelo. And he'll be talking about natural farming, about propagation. And uh, we have a whole series, many more episodes. So thank you for joining us uh, for this episode two. Many more to come every Friday at 2 p.m. Once again, Kumupalani and Kalawai Amor, mahalo nui for your time. And we will see you next week, next week, Friday, 2 p.m. Aloha. Aloha. Signing out. Okay, we got... Uh, And God, you must stand up and be proud. Sing this message right out loud. Tell me where, where are the brothers who stand up and fight?